This is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 16 of my podcast. Please subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. I hope you're doing okay in those difficult times. I hope you're safe, you have plenty of food and entertainment. As you can see, everything's perfectly okay here. I made some new friends. Um, not much of a conversation with those guys, but they're generally pretty friendly so far. So let's see how it goes. Anyway, this week I'm going to go through some AWS news and announcements. So let's get started. So what do we have this week? Uh, let's start with a new feature in Amazon TextTract. TextTract is a high level service that lets you accurately extract text and structure from forms, documents, etc. And uh, now it's even more accurate for checkboxes and selection elements. So uh, let's look at an example. So this is the kind of document you would want to use with TextTrack. So this is actually a health insurance form. So it has a lot of boxes, as you can see. And, um, and the, the purpose, obviously, is to detect whether a box has been uh, ticked or not. And uh, well, this is the kind of thing that uh, TextTrack can, uh, can do accurately. So uh, it's going to be able to find those boxes, first of all. And, uh, and then it's going to be able to figure out if a box has been selected or not. And, uh, and this will reflect in the, uh, in the information that you get from the, the JSON API, right? So this is a cool feature because, of course, this is a super popular use case for TextTrack. Okay, uh, let's look at the next one. So the next one is one of my favorite services, Amazon Polly. Polly is text-to-speech, and uh, and a while ago we launched this feature called the Newscaster Style. So uh, let me explain in case you missed it. So the Newscaster Style is the ability to apply a news style to the speech that's generated uh, starting from just text. Okay, and this is made possible by a new text-to-speech engine in Poly called the Neural Engine, where um, the, the sound file, the waveform that you listen to, is actually generated by a deep learning network. So since it's generated, we can apply styles as well. So uh, a while ago, we launched a newscaster style for English, and now it's available for US Spanish. So let me show you how to use it. Super simple. So you would just go to uh, here to the Poly console or use the API, and you need to use an SSML um, syntax. Okay, so this is the syntax we need. Okay, so speak, and then uh, that Amazon domain name tag with the value news, saying we want to apply the style of, uh, of a newscaster. We're going to select the neural engine, and we're going to select Spanish, okay, and we can see supported languages right now are um, British English, US English, uh, Brazilian Portuguese, and US Spanish, okay? So make sure you use the SSML syntax, right, and you need to close those tags, obviously. Make sure you use the neural engine and then select the language, okay? And let's try and do this. In essencia. Algo pareció cambiar en Lionel Messi el verano pasado en la Copa América. No cambió el resultado y Argentina se marchó de Brasil sin el título. Pero el niño tímido y silencioso, ese que se ponía nervioso en una charla frente a sus compañeros y que por rebeldía o pereza no cantaba el himno, se descubrió como un tipo cercano en el vestuario y desafiante ante los micrófonos. Se le veía cómplice de la nueva generación del albiceleste en la concentración y punzante en la zona de prensa, hasta el punto de que acusó de corrupción a la Conmebol. All right, so I don't speak Spanish. Uh, this, is, um, this is a news article from uh, El País, uh, a leading Spanish newspaper. And as you can hopefully hear, not only is the speech extremely natural, extremely lifelike, but it's also dynamic and it's... Uh, it's really something you would expect to hear on the radio or on TV because we have this style apply to the text okay so there you go that's uh, the new uh, poly text-to-speech feature for Spanish pretty cool okay let's move on um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, 
a whole bunch of new tutorials for D plants. Remember D plants? Here's one. <laughs> well, did you forget about D plants? So it's a really cool device. It's a, it's a tiny computer vision device uh, with an Intel uh, an Intel uh, board and a camera, and uh, con it's connected to AWS, and uh, so that you can train a computer vision model in the cloud, maybe on, on SageMaker, and you can easily deploy it to the camera using green grass, uh, and then of course you can run predictions on the video stream that's captured. Um, by the camera and all of that happens locally so we have local prediction on the camera and you can uh, if you want to you can send information through maybe IOT or another service back to the cloud to say hey these are the, the predictions that I made these are the objects I detected etc etc so uh, deep lens has been has been out for a while and I spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, uh, writing about it and, and presenting it and so now uh, we have a new website for deep lens uh, where we show you how to get started obviously and we also added a whole bunch of new projects and uh, going from you know the simple ones uh, some of the projects that were already available in the in the camera to more advanced projects like worker safety coffee counter everybody needs that and more advanced projects trash sorter wow okay that's pretty nice uh, i need one of those and uh, and so you can just go and experiment with those new projects and uh you know i guess a lot of us have uh, some time uh, to do that at the moment so if you have a deep lens camera uh, and you haven't looked at it and played with it for a while and then you know it's a good opportunity to spend some more time with uh with deep lens and uh, and learn more about computer vision and uh, learn more about um, architectures that work well for those kind of problems. So I think that's pretty cool. Let's move on. Okay, of course we're going to talk about SageMaker. So uh, uh, the, the news on SageMaker this week is that you can now train using G4DN and C5N instances. So there's a long list of instances that uh, SageMaker supports for training and deployment and we just added those uh, those two uh, fairly recent instance families so g4 is a gpu family as you can imagine and it's powered by the t4 uh, gpu from nvidia um, and the the d thing means it has fast um, local storage uh, in the shape of um, nvme ssd storage so if you uh, if you have data sets and if you train and copy those data sets locally to the training instances which i guess is the the nominal uh, scenario for SageMaker, then um the io the local io on the instance is going to be extremely fast i mean i've, I've benchmarked those uh, uh nvme ssds a while ago and they are blazingly fast so uh, if you want to save time they're a good option and the n thing means uh, enhanced networking and on the on the larger g4s this means that you can go all the way up to 100 gigabit of network bandwidth so uh, if you do distributed training or if you're streaming uh, the data set to the training instance using pipe mode well obviously uh, that's pretty that's a pretty sweet uh, network bandwidth to uh, to work with right so there you go g4dn t4 gpu local nvme storage up to 100 gigabit networking so those pack quite a bit of a, of a punch and the c5n instances are just the latest um, one of the latest evolutions of the c5 family so compute optimized with the intel skylake chips and again the n uh, extension here means uh, one up to 100 gigabit networking so uh, again a good fit if you uh, if you use cpu instances for uh, for distributed training you're just going to save uh, quite a bit of time uh, thanks to the the increased bandwidth okay all right and what do we have next well of course we have uh, yet one more update to the deep learning containers as we know those containers are aws maintained containers for pytorch uh, tensorflow and uh, apache mxnet and they come uh, in in a cpu 
configuration or a GPU configuration. And, um, and then basically you can use those containers as is to train uh, or, uh, or predict. Um, and you can use them on, uh, on SageMaker as well. So no need to maintain your own containers. We do that for you. And uh, I strongly encourage you to use those. They are, uh, they are a nice time saver and they're free to use. So that's good. You just pay for the, the compute uh, instances that you, um, that you train them on or predict them on, but uh, the, the containers are free to use. Okay, so here we're updating for PyTorch 1.4 and MX16, and, uh, and I'm sure we'll be back at some point with PyTorch 1.5 and MXNet 1.7. I mean, that's, uh, that race never stops. All right, that's it for this episode. Again, please subscribe to my channel for future videos. Plenty of really cool stuff coming in the next few weeks. And again, please stay safe wherever you are. As for me, well, you know, I'm ready for anything. So if those guys in the background start creating trouble, you know, I'm kind of ready. All right, enough comedy. Uh, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Until then, keep rocking.